If you're shopping for your first pistol, one of the most important decisions you need to make is green gas versus CO2. It's an age old debate that's almost become our version of 556 versus 762. There's really no right answer, but you should understand the pros and cons of each to make the right decision for you. I've touched on this topic before, but this time I have a few more points for you to consider. Let's get started. Green gas, for those of you who don't know, is the same gas as propane without the smell and with some silicone oil added. It's loaded into the magazine exactly like a butane lighter. It's been on the market a little bit longer as far as airsoft goes and many of the most popular pistols on the market are green gas. The built-in silicone oil lubricates the gun as you shoot it, meaning a little bit less maintenance. Although all gas guns should be taken apart and maintained at least once a season. Green gas is stored at a much lower pressure than CO2 at about 100 PSI versus 800 PSI for CO2. However, this does not mean that CO2 is eight times the power. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but for the sake of this video, expect about 300 FPS for green gas versus 400 FPS for CO2. Green gas pistols are almost always field legal with that barrel extension removed. That same lower pressure also means less strain on the internals, which generally means less broken parts. Another advantage is the ability to run different variants of gas. They have higher pressure options like Nuprol's red or black gas, and then they have lower pressure options like duster gas for even less stress on those internals. If you plan to use an external high pressure air rig or HPA, for the most part, you'll need a green gas pistol. Although there are a couple CO2 HPA kits on the market. That being said, HPA does require a bit more experience and tinkering, and I wouldn't really recommend it for a first setup. CO2 or carbon dioxide is commonly sold in these 12 gram cartridges, which are inserted and punctured into your magazine. The advantage first and foremost is the power. You get a harder kick and a higher shot velocity, but be aware that they will often exceed many field limits. CO2 offers a better power consistency, remaining pretty constant until the gas runs out. Green gas on the other hand will start to drop off almost immediately, steadily lowering until the gas is empty. Green gas is also more affected by the so-called cool down effect. When firing off shots in rapid succession, the gas and the magazine will get really cold, losing a lot of its power. That power consistency makes CO2 potentially a bit better for a target pistol and definitely better for a pistol with full auto. Because CO2 is less affected by that cool down effect, it'll also perform a bit better in colder temperatures, making it ideal for colder months. Although many modern green gas pistols are efficient enough to run in colder temperatures, especially when running specialized gases like Nuprol. We also have these mag warming inserts for your pouches, and some players even bring a heating pad for their magazines. CO2 has certainly come a long way, and there are many great models on the market, and even CO2 cartridges with built-in silicone oil. But at the end of the day, higher pressure means more broken parts. It's as simple as that. As far as cost goes, for the most part, guns will be pretty evenly priced, of course, with the exception of higher end green gas pistols like Tokyo Marui or Umar X Glocks. As for cost of the gas itself, an eight ounce can of green gas will run you about 15 bucks and last you approximately 600 shots. One cartridge of CO2 works out to about a dollar each and will last you about 50 shots. This works out to about two and a half cents per shot on green gas and about two cents per shot for CO2. Of course, if you choose to run straight propane and add your own oil, the cost gets even better. A 16 ounce container of propane will cost you about nine bucks and last you 1200 shots. This works out to about 0.75 of a cent per shot running propane. However, this does not take into account the cost of the propane adapter or silicone oil, which will run you about 25 bucks. If you already have a large collection of CO2, perhaps for air guns or portable tire inflators, then naturally CO2 might be a wise choice for you. But the same can be said if you already own some propane tanks for camping. At the end of the day, the cost will be pretty similar, but if you're going for the absolute cheapest option, propane is the best bet. Another consideration is the ease of use. It's easy to think CO2 with their handy little cartridges is the easy way, but it's not always the case. When you're done shooting your green gas gun, you always wanna leave a bit of gas inside your magazine. 
When you're done shooting, simply top it up for a few seconds with gas and it's ready for storage. With CO2, you actually don't want to store your magazine with a loaded cartridge inside as the higher pressure can definitely damage your seals. But you'll need to empty it out first before you remove it. You never want to purge your magazine release valve, nor do you want to always dry fire it until it's empty. So you have to load up some BBs, go back onto the field, and then empty out your magazines. Okay, that's not that big a deal, but what about when you're loading up in the safe zone for the next round? Let's say you have a bit of CO2 left, but you're not sure if it's enough to shoot the whole magazine. Again, you're gonna have to load up the magazine, go back onto the field, drain those magazines, remove the old CO2, put in a new one, load the BBs, and then you're ready. With green gas, simply top it up for a few seconds, load the BBs, and you're good to go. On the flip side, CO2 does offer the advantage of portability. If you want everything you need to shoot your pistol in one handy little case, you can easily store a couple CO2 along with your pistol. We do offer portable green gas containers in the shape of pretty nifty dummy grenades, but they're still not quite as portable or hold as much gas as just a couple CO2 cartridges. Okay, let's do a quick recap. The advantages of green gas are almost always feel legal, less strain on the internals, ability to run multiple gas variants, and ease of topping up mags with gas. The advantages of CO2 are higher power and kick, less cooldown effect, more consistent FPS, and portability. With all those points, I hope you see why I almost always recommend green gas for a first pistol, especially for gaming use. I really have nothing against CO2, but if you're looking for the most stress-free experience, stick with green gas and save CO2 for a second pistol. I hope you found this video useful. As always, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you want more videos like this, and we'll catch you on the next one.